Welcome to the Norwegian Epic. In this video, I'm going to be doing a tour of the Norwegian Epic to show you around. Let's go take a look at what this ship has to offer. I'm Sarah, and this is my husband, Alan. We work nine to fives, but use our vacation time to cruise, visit resorts, check out new cities, camp, and find awesome food and breweries along the way. Stick around for videos on things to do, tours, and helpful travel tips. We cruised on the Norwegian Epic for a week on a Caribbean and Bahamas itinerary. In this video, I'm going through the ship deck by deck to give you a full tour. Don't forget to check out my other videos from our cruise on the Norwegian Epic, linked in the description below. Now let's jump in starting on deck four. This is the gangway where they let passengers off the ship in port or use these exits to load the tender boats to go ashore. As you can see, this is where you would go through security upon return to the ship, but getting off the ship, they just scan your ship card. Deck five is one of the main public areas. Here you will find many of the main passenger areas and an escalator. The escalators go between deck five and deck six. Starting at the back of the ship is Taste Dining Room, and this is one of the main dining room options included in your cruise fare. Starbucks is located beside the atrium and atrium bar. This isn't included in your cruise fare, so you need the premium plus drink package or you can pay as you go. Guest Services is also found on the fifth deck within the atrium area. If you have any questions or issues while on your cruise, this is where I'd recommend going. In this area, you can also find the Cruise Next desk where you can book your next cruise. And the Shore Excursion desk is also here if you want to book or make any changes to your Shore Excursions. But you can also do that right on your TV in the stateroom or on your app. Across from this area is where you'll find the atrium seating. It's open to the deck above and here they host different events, entertainment activities, they play movies, and host information sessions throughout the cruise. Moving forward toward the front of the ship on deck five, there were even more public areas, including Le Bistro, the French restaurant. This isn't included in your cruise fare unless you have the free at sea dining package. You can also purchase a dining package or pay to dine here as you go. Next up is the collection art gallery. This is where all the paintings and photos are displayed throughout the cruise in advance of the art auction. Across is the Click Photo Gallery, and this is where you can purchase any photo packages and check photos taken of you throughout the cruise by the cruise staff. If you're interested in cards or board games, there's a card room available. Inside there are a few card tables and chairs, and there were even some board games available if you didn't bring any of your own. Past the card room is the Library and Internet Cafe. Here you can choose from a variety of books, and you can use the ship computers to access the internet. The internet cafe is open 24 hours. Now up to deck six. Starting at the back of the ship, you will find the Manhattan room, which is another one of the main dining rooms included in your cruise fare. You can make reservations in advance or just show up to dine. Just outside of the dining room is the Cascades bar and above it is open to deck seven. The Cavern Club is a bar and performance area with lounge seating. They had their entertainment schedule posted outside the door, or you could find it on the Daily Planner or the app. We enjoyed this venue a few times throughout our cruise. Next up is the casino, and this one permits smoking. So anytime you're in this vicinity, it smells very strongly of cigarette smoke. The casino had a variety of slot machines and table games to choose from. It's only open when out at sea, so not when you're in port. In the middle of the casino, you can find Shanghai's Chinese restaurant and noodle bar. This is included in your cruise fare, but they don't take reservations, so if you want to dine here, you'll have to wait in line. They do have buzzers though, so if it's busy, you can go play in the casino or have a drink at the Cascades Bar or Cavern Bar while you wait. We managed to eat here and I'll share all about it in my included food video. Further down in the casino, there is an opening to see below to the Taste Dining Room. And then you will make it to Ocean's Neighborhood Bar and Grill. This is another included dining option and it's open 24 hours a day. So no matter when you're looking for something to eat or drink, you can head to this spot. Here you will also find some pool tables, a few different games, darts, and a foosball table. If you wanna play any of the games, they are extra and you can scan your ship card to play. Some of the seats here also overlook the atrium area, so while you're eating or having a drink, you can enjoy the entertainment below as well. 
This ship also has a bowling alley with three lanes. You can use your ship card to pay for your games as these are not included in your cruise fare. Moving toward the front of the ship is the Headliners Comedy Club. Here they have comedians perform and they also do dueling pianos, which was a very entertaining show. There's a bar inside and seating goes from higher stools at the back to regular chairs at the front. At the entertainment kiosk, you can make show reservations, but you can also do that on the app or in advance of your cruise. The Spiegel Tent was another entertainment venue, but we didn't see anything in there and it didn't seem set up to accommodate a large crowd, so I'm not really sure what they used this for. Then at the front of the ship was the Epic Theatre. We saw a few of the evening shows here, including one of the Beatles shows, Burn the Floor, and their mind-reading Mentalist show. We also had to pass through this area to get off the ship and take the tender to their private island. Now let's check out Deck 7, another one of their public decks with various amenities including bars, shopping, and restaurants. At the front of the ship is the Bliss Lounge. Inside was a bar with lounge seating and it was used for karaoke and other events throughout the cruise. After 11pm, this venue was 18 plus, so no kids allowed. This deck had pretty much all of the shopping on board, whether you were looking for designer items, jewelry, watches, perfume, alcohol, or souvenirs, you could find it here. There was also a shop that had some essentials in case you forgot anything at home. Moving toward the middle of the ship, there was an opening down to the taste dining room on the fifth deck, and you could access deck six here via the central stairs. This is where you could find the Sky Vodka Bar, which is an immersive experience. We paid extra to do this. They give you a cape and gloves, and inside you get to try a few Sky Vodka cocktails served in ice glasses at the ice bar. They also have benches and tables made of ice. It was very cool, pun intended. Next up is the Shaker's Martini and Champagne Bar. Here they have some nice lounge seating, and it was a very popular bar every evening especially when there was live music. Across from Shakers was the Teppanyaki restaurant. This is not included unless you have a dining package and it also has an additional cover charge, but you do get to have dinner and a show as you watch it get prepared. Malting's Whiskey Bar is up next as we move to the back of the ship. Here there was tall table seating and some smaller two and four seater tables as well. There was often live music here and we really enjoyed this bar during the cruise. They also had some couch seating and low tables in the back that were more secluded. It was also open to the casino below, so you did get some wafts of cigarette smoke in this area. Behind the whiskey bar was a humidor cigar lounge. Only cigars were permitted, no cigarettes or vaping were allowed. The ship also had a barber shop right across from the whiskey bar and there were some more shops here as well. At the back of the ship you could find more dining options that were only included in dining packages or you could pay as you go. Moderno was the Brazilian restaurant, there was a bar in the middle and beside that is Cagney's Steakhouse. We tried and loved both of these restaurants on this cruise and I'll share more about that in an upcoming video. And outside of the restaurants, you could see down to the bar below. On decks 8 to 12, you could find various stateroom cabins. And if you needed the medical center on this ship, you could find that on deck 10. The hours were posted on the door and there was a note about motion sickness tablets and where you could purchase those on the ship. Deck 13 was also mostly staterooms, but you could also find the bridge viewing room. I've never seen into a bridge area before, so it was really interesting. Unfortunately, no filming of the bridge is permitted, so I did have to turn off the camera. On to deck 14, and this is where you will find the Pulse Fitness Center and Spa. It's located in the center of the ship toward the back. Here you can find an array of spa services available and access to the fitness center. They had all the standard gym equipment and also had classes available. Plus, there was even a salon here. Toward the front of the ship, you could find the Splash Academy, and this is where the Guppies Playroom was for kids between 6 months and 3 years old. Then for kids aged 3 to 12 years old, there was a Splash Academy drop-off area and activities to keep kids entertained. And at the very front of the ship, you can find La Cucina, the Italian restaurant. 
Access to this restaurant is on deck 15 through the buffet, which I thought was very odd. However, you could get your buffet food at breakfast and lunch and go down to eat it there where it was more quiet. There was also a wheelchair access to the restaurant if you needed it. They had a self-serve drink station and some great seating areas overlooking the front of the ship. Now let's take a look at deck 15. And this is where you'll find the Garden Cafe, which is the main buffet that's open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner daily. It's quite a large buffet with plenty of seating. And the food stations are repeated throughout, so basically, no matter where you start, you'll see everything they have to offer. However, there was only one ice cream counter that I remember seeing. We really enjoyed the make-to-order counters and our overall food and dining experiences at this buffet. And if you want to dine outside, they also have plenty of seating and a smaller buffet area that is open for breakfast and lunch. As you can see, some of the tables are shaded and some get plenty of sun depending on the time of day. Past the great outdoors, you'll find a towel station and the beer cart that also serves some ready-made frozen drinks. Across from that is the Waves Pool Bar and this was busy pretty much all day, every day. The lineups did get pretty bad most days. There's also an outdoor stage where live music and dancing lessons took place. If you're a smoker, there's a designated smoking area past the Waves Pool Bar. And if you're not, you may want to avoid this area. Now moving into the Aqua Park. This is the main pool area on the ship. Here you'll find the pools and poolside areas with lots of seating in the sun and along the perimeter. They have multiple hot tubs here and there are also a few water slides as well. This was a very busy area during sea days, as it usually is on most ships. Toward the back of the pool area, there was a small shallow pool for little kids and a mini putting area that went through the tunnel connecting to the marketplace. And that's where you can find another activity, rock climbing. Due to the weather on our cruise though, this activity was never actually open. If video arcades are your thing, or you have kids interested in spending some time indoors, there is a fairly large video arcade here. All of the games cost extra, but you can use your ship card to pay for them. And if you're a teen or have teens cruising with you, there is the Entourage Teens Club. We didn't dare enter, but it can be accessed near the arcade on deck 15. Technically though, it is on deck 16. The marketplace has some high top tables and stools, sun loungers, and a towel stand. It connects you to Spice H2O, which is the adults only area. There's plenty of sun loungers and basically no shade. There's a very small pool and also a couple of hot tubs and a big screen where they play sports and other NCL promos. Up on deck 16 is where they have a small buffet area and some tables and chairs. They also have a bar and this bar permits smoking. Deck 17 is next and this is where you will find the sports court and they have a sun deck. Between deck 16 and 19, they also had various cabin categories including Haven and Haven Suites and amenities that are only available for Haven guests. So unfortunately, I couldn't access it to share those in this video. I hope this video can be helpful for you if you're planning a cruise on the Norwegian Epic in the future. And as always, if you like this video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Coming up, I'll be sharing our experience visiting Great Stirrup Key, so stay tuned for that.